information early in the morning. We got this information from Adam Scheffner that yours truly, Lyle Collins, to be traded or released, basically. Which is a backwards philosophy, in my opinion. I'm just going to talk to you guys about that while I'm loading everything up on the platform. Appreciate you for your patience. Thank you so much for your time. It's beautiful morning. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Let's go. Be sure on your way in, hit that like, share this content, grow the nation. One movement at a time. We're stacking things together brick by brick. Let this go. Come on. They say, ain't no party like a law nation party. Yo. Facts, facts. Come on. What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. All right, so my, my thoughts on this with the Laya Collins situation, and I hope you guys got your coffee. I got mine. You know, that's the only way to start this morning off with a good cup of joe, and I ain't talking about Biden. But what I'm saying here is, Cowboy Nation, this particular team hustle backwards to me, and when you hustle backwards, this is what you get. Um... When we say we want nothing less than a second-round draft pick for Lyle Collins, we really mean that, you know. If not, Collins is better for this team. I don't see even in the second round, basically. We're we just trying to get something out of it in return, but I don't see any tackle or guard that's going to make it to the second round that's going to be a starter, right? or have NFL caliber starting pedigree. It's going to take time, growing pains, and all of that. And I'm going to stand firm on my beliefs. Laya Collins is a good right tackle. Would have been a great left guard. I'm going to repeat, Laya Collins, a good right tackle. Right now, he's good. He got 2019 to fall upon. 2019. But outside of that, if he were to stay at guard, don't you guys know that this kid is just... <sighs> it's crazy because now the Cowboys get nothing in return. By this news being the way that it is, why? Why would I, why would I even consider giving up resources when I know that the Cowboys then already, whether or not it's a mistake or it's intentional, Dallas have given permission to start to starting right tackle, Lyle Collin, to seek a trade, according to his new agent, Peter, <laughs> not Parker. Uh, Dallas need cap room. Collins was scheduled to make $15.25 million this season, likely to be released if no trade. Now, they use the word likely, but nine times out of ten, if I'm a gambling man, which I'm not, teams can sit on that and say, hey, man, I ain't finna give up resources so you guys can laugh and key, key, key at us in press conference, the two or three press conferences that, that you do weekly anyway. Right? Stephen Jones got two pressers. Jerry Jones got at least a minimum of one presser. Normally, I think he have two. So that's four press conferences a week that teams will be hearing. That's a lot of talking, right? And you're going to give up information. The more you talk, the more information you give, right? They're not going to be the butt in if anybody joke to start to relight the fire for the Cowboys. The Cowboys got a first-round draft pick out of Collins or a second-round draft pick. Y'all, you got to – 
you got to start thinking outside of just Cowboys. That's why we never get trades. We People rarely trade with us because, we, for one, we talk too much, right? And that's why I said if you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too, if you can wait and not be tired by waiting or lied about, don't deal in lies or hate it and yet give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. That's the Cowboys. We try to look too good and we talk too wise. We do. From a philosophical thing, I wish that the Jones family, whoever running and operating this organization, that they join a society to keep them quiet. Because nobody's seen Khalil Mack trade before it happened. Woke up one day, Khalil Mack gone, right? No more of their weeping and wailing over there in Chicago, lad, right? Oh, no more weeping and wailing. <laughs> you know, there's no more of that there. Because they got from under the gun. The whole situation with Russell Wilson, gone just like that. But if it was the Cowboys, it had been talked about for ages and years. Yeah, so that's the thing is with the Cowboys. Um, And I believe that there's more to it than what we can imagine. The money that that we are not getting up under, let me see my guy Gelkin. He said the Cowboys continue to work toward a potential right tackle. Lyle Collins trade, sources said. He expected to departure via trade or release. We have little impact to the 2022 salary cap of $1.3 million in savings. So you're going to save $1.3 million if you look, that's not even worth it for the 2022. It's not. Whatever go, that's going on with Lyle Collins, Cowboy Nation, and thank everybody for joining in. Thank you for being part of this episode here. Thank you guys on this bright and early morning. My name is Law Nation, Law Nation Sports. Appreciate you guys' love and adulations for the nation. Whatever is going on, this has nothing to do with his pay at this point. This is something to do with his play. Somebody's feeling is hurt right now. But at some point, when you are comfortable, when you have the mindset to say to yourself, all right, we want to do what's, we want to do what's comfortable for the player, basically, because we care about players' feelings. No. No, I don't care about your feelings. We try to win games. Are you about winning a game? Well, if you're about winning the game, we're going to pick you up. We're going to put you inside as guard to protect the number one asset of this team, the philosophy of this team. It's not just the quarterback, but it's the running game. That's the bloodline of this team. That's the bloodline of this team. 2014, we were a running team, was not a throwing team. Tony Romo only threw for 300 yards one time in that entire year, entire season. Running team. 2016, we were a running team. 2018, we got out of our way. We tried new philosophy. Wide receiver by committee. Law, do you have any other truth? Yes, tight end by committee. That didn't work. And then we switched around, hear me out, Cowboy Nation and everybody that's listening, and starting to go out there and grab an Amari Cooper. 2019, one can argue, you would have made it to the playoff if you just ran the ball better. 
put the ball out of Dak Prescott's hand and go back to running the ball. 2022 season, head into this season, what are we going to do now? You saw 2021 season this past season. Yes, we were throwing the ball, but I can tell you right now, if you run the ball better, you will have a more efficient rate, and guess what? Maybe you will win a playoff game. <clears throat> Saints doing good with their cap space. This is normal. God appreciate you. Trey for Dak for Deshaun Watson. Uh, this is great saves. I don't, I don't think that that's the answer. Mac is made for a three, four defense because reason why I don't think that, that that's an answer. The media, the media. We run, we run Deshaun Watson out of here. All the massage parlors would be scared, and especially anything dealing with that situation or scenario. Jerry Jones got enough to deal with already. Gina says a third for Coop is a freaking joke. You're right. See, our problem is, Cowboy Nation, we just don't have enough. We just don't have enough moves in the front office to will and deal trades. We don't. Who was the last guy we traded for? Robert Quinn. Had him here for a cup of coffee. Couldn't read him up and he was gone. Went over Chicago land. People were laughing and kiki ki and saying, Law, I told you he was washed. Law, I told you he was trash. And I said, hey, man, just, just back up a little bit. The dude, it's a pandemic. It's crazy. Give the man a chance. Give that man opportunities. And then just this past season, I know you guys wish you had Robert Quinn now, right? Especially with this D coordinator. Come on now. Um, appreciate y'all. Still is younger, stronger, and more versatile. See you, Collins. Yeah. Now, Here's my thing. Here's my stance with Steele. We all we all like Terrence Steele, right? His first year, he was reserved still, 211, right? Couldn't bust through a paper bag. But he went through his growing pains. And one thing that you don't want to do is slow the progress of a young guy. You don't. You really don't want to destroy that. And the Cowboys played around with that. They did because they got greedy. They, they were sitting there salivating and saying to themselves, all right, we got Tamron Steele. He's playing pretty well. All right, so we will keep Connor Williams in there because we know for sure this guy's playing out of his mind. He just got a little holding problem. But if this guy plays all the way up to his max degree, maybe we can parlay with him. He greeted for those compensatory picks because I don't think that they were willing to trade him because they don't know how to will and deal, you know. <laughs> but it is what it is. Uh, it is what it is. I see a lot of people wanting to trade Dak Prescott, but the moment we get Deshaun Watson, there'll be a lot of people wanting to trade Deshaun Watson. Put it like this. If Deshaun Watson is so great and good, why is he being traded? Hmm? Why, why, why should there be a trade situation? Hmm? He should stay where he's at and build around him if he's a marquee, innocent quarterback that he said he is. That's the, that's the situation for the Cowboys. And that's the situation for the Texans. Um, <clears throat> what's up, Gene? Appreciate you for jumping in. What have Watson done? This is from C. Nix. Yeah, I mean he, he he's a good guy as far as their organization and franchise. This this is the thing that I want most Cowboy fans to understand. When you plan for the Cowboys and you do anything that's slightly good, you're being compared to Roger Staubach, Troy Aikman. Tony Romo, even you getting compared to Danny White. You do something good in Texans, there's no quarterback in Texans history. Now there's a quarterback in Houston Oilers history, 
But collectively speaking, there were no quarterback in Texans history outside of Deshaun Watson and some other quarterback named Savage. He's not getting compared to Warren Moon. That's a whole nother organization. Let let them have their weapons. All right. Uh, Jay Versus says, let's be honest, Dak needs a better OC. Man, come on with it, man. Come on with it, man. It's too early with all those truths, man. Come on with it, Jay Versi. Come on with it, man. So the top of the news is for the morning is that Lyle Collins, for those who just not joining in, I see some more people joining in. I thank you, and the name is Law Nation. <laughs> News at the top of the hour, Deshaun Watson is staying in Texans. <laughs> I just play with y'all. But news at the top of the hour, Lyle Collins is to be traded or released. Equals no savings. And it goes like this, Cowboy Nation. We got to do better on these trade situations. Shout out to you, Sadiq. We appreciate you, and thank you for your prayers. I, I really appreciate you guys for praying, for, for family strength and everything. Family strength and everything. I really appreciate you. Offensive finder to Zeke Torres PCL, and Pollard wasn't used. Relax, y'all. This is B.D. Gray. Too much truth in the morning. B.D. Gray. B.D. Gray be knowing his stuff, man. Uh, be knowing his stuff. And shout out to those who send me mock drafts, man. And um, it is what it is. Here, here's the situation with, with the Cowboys' offense. I, I'm going to tell you guys right now that this offense will be the number one offense in the National Football League in 2022, if not number two or three, no less than that. This offense, this offense will generate yards. This offense will generate some points. So by it doing those two things, where should we focus on, Cowboy Nation? If this offense can generate yards and points, what we need to focus on, hmm? I recall a certain team in the early 2000s said all we need our quarterback to do is give us one touchdown and maybe the special teams give us a field goal and we'll win the doggone game. So don't let this news distract you. Don't let this news point only to the Cowboys with the 24th pick, the Dallas Cowboys select offensive linemen from such and such school. This this team, we didn't gave enough to the offense. Enough, you know. <laughs> we gave enough. Paid the quarterback, paid the running back, paid the wide receivers, you know, paid the tight end. Let's get focused in on this defense. It's time out to, to, to try to look cute with the points and scores. Uh, shout out to you, Cole. Appreciate you for the donation here. As a Cowboy fan, we really need to stop comparing this team, this Cowboys team, to the 90s team. We need to focus on building a new 20s dynasty. Cole's Cowboys Sport Report. Man, y'all be sure to check him out. Spitting at you guys this morning time. It's too early for it, Cole. We appreciate you, man. <laughs> That's the one thing, Cowboy Nation, that I I really, really hope that the Cowboys just stop doing, right? <laughs> I really do. And, and, I, and I get it, right? When things are good, you always go back to the glory days, right? You always go back to the glory days. And people, generally, collectively speaking, never satisfied. There was a group of people in the biblical days who were wandering into, into the wilderness, for 40 years, had food falling out of the sky, clothes never never ripped off of them, right? Everything was provided to them. 
they could look up to the heavens and say, hey, man, I want a double cheeseburger, no lettuce and tomato, and can you add some extra pickles to it? And it'll fall out of the sky and land in their hand, right? They would have the new J's, the new Louis Vuitton, the Gucci's, and it never withers. It never fades away. Look, there was one group in that same grouping that it was too hot. The cloud would follow them and give them cover, right? I'm like, I'm like, good grief. I was reading the story. I was like, man, why are they complaining? It's, it's 110 degrees, sweat bubbling. Hey, man, I'd like to order that cloud to come follow me today. And uh, can I have a, in this desert, can I have an oasis right here so I could take a dip? Hmm? Yep, them people was like, hey, I can't take this no more. I'm getting too much. We want something tangible. We want something physical that we can touch. I don't want this magical being to take care of me anymore. They they didn't want it no more like that. It was like, <laughs> hello. I don't want that no more, man. Shame. <laughs> Shame. Cowboys organization, Shame. baby. Had a coach that coached these guys hard. One player had asthma. <laughs> What's wrong with him? He got asthma. Well, tell him the asthma effing field is over there. Huh? <laughs> hey, hey, your quarterback, man, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. He threw two interceptions. Tell the quarterback to come here. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. I coach him hard, right? Because that coach understood and knew that you get nothing out of comfort. Michael says Deshaun Watson is not better than Dak. Hey, I mean, it's too early for that, man. <laughs> it's too early. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, C. Nick, and thank you again for the super chat, Michael. Appreciate you. So this team, this team literally get in his own way. And I can only imagine if things was left well alone enough, you know, if things was just left alone, then we wouldn't be talking about comparing this decade of team or this new era of team to the 90s, three decades ago, right? <laughs> or more at this point is getting to that point. So it is what it is at this point. My thing is, my thing is, it's a two-folds because I've seen some people say, Tyron Smith, he the one that need to be traded. And I remind people again, you know, all of this home team discount stuff and moving and sliding and kicking money back comes from Tyron Smith. You see, they used his humble mentality because when you think of Tyron Smith, you think of the big guy for Green Mile. May he rest in peace. I forgot the guy's name. That he's very soft-spoken, right? And the Cowboys played on that for many of years. If you look up Tyron Smith, collective salary, juxtaposed to all of the other players that play in his skill set and his range, the average six to nine million more APY than he do. But he never complained. He never bagged. He never said, I'm going to sit out for money. He put his do rag on and his, uh, <laughs> and his knee brace on his arm and he get out there to work, even though he played with a pinched nerve. Last season, Cowboy Nation. Two freak accidents happened to him. <laughs> and it could be that black cat that's hovering around Cowboys or walking around Cowboys. It could be Sky Mirror fault, right? That Patriots game, a guy rolled up under him. His own player, by the way, took him out for like a couple of weeks, right? And then he got back. I told everybody, you know, when Tyron Smith come back, it's going to take him a game or so. And it just so happened his first game back was the Raiders. 
played that game, and then something else happened to him. Freak accident. Nothing happened to him versus like on the field, but freak accident. It happened. Some people are snake bitten. <laughs> but I blame all of this, baby. Hell, Jerry, I'm saying. But Jerry gets some of this, man. He gets some of this madness, Cowboy Nation. Uh, Iceberg Q. Oh, was it Connor Williams that took him out three times? Because I, I think it was somebody. The player that rolled up under him the first time, it had to be Connor Williams. It was somebody right to the right, to the right of him, right? And he rolled up under him. And, and Tyron Smith ain't no 280-pound person, right? He's 300-something. Big guy. When all that weight falling somewhere, he got to go. I'm glad it didn't break. So it, it just appears that, you know, here's another thing that I have to tell you guys. When you look at – I want you guys to really play, pay close attention to – uh, this right here. When Tyron Smith give up the sack, he's normally helping. He's normally helping the guy to the right of him. I can't make this stuff up. But it's going to look like, hey, hey, man, why he didn't widen out his step a little bit? Why he's giving up sacks to the outside? Name me one sack from Tyron Smith that he gave up from the inside. You won't find it, right? <laughs> he's worried about his right guy. You know what I'm saying? The guy on to the right of him. And the same could be said when teams figure out Zach Martin. You rarely see a sack giving up on Zach Martin on the right of him. Oh, it's Tyler Biotis. <laughs> and shout out to Tyler Biotis. Shout out to him. Started off real rocky, got a little bit better, a little bit better toward the latter part of the season, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, that's why it's hard to root for him. But many, man, they injuries. Yeah, appreciate you, Mike. Appreciate you. That's why it's hard not to root for him. That's why it's hard not to root for him. Because he was the first guy that had that mentality saying, hey, I'm not going to go back and forth. With the Jones family, they said they gave me a they gave him like a, a eight to nine year contract. So when we saw we got a chance to identify what the Chiefs did to um uh, what's the kid name oh Pat Mahomes it was nothing new to us the contract was big right half of a billion dollar contract is a big contract. And he the one set the market on fire because anytime you do something in the market, other players and other teammates looking at it saying, hey, I want that. I want that. Right? If you think I'm lying, if you got two kids, give only one of them ice cream. Hmm? Regardless of what they do in school, grade, or one is who well spoken of, or one stutter when they speak, or whatever. They're gonna want the same thing. I want that. I want that. No, you can't get it. No, I want that. And oftentimes, it's the kid that you overlook, the one that you're trying to say, hey, man, he ain't really as smart as the other one, or she's really not as brilliant as the other one. That will work two to three times harder to get that. Frederick, Frederick was another guy that did that long contract as well as Zach Martin. All of those offensive linemen guys never gave any lip to when Jones family opened up that long contract, the renegotiation part of it. I want that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So when people say, hey, Dak Prescott contract, no, it got two vulnerable years in it, and they got a lot of wiggle room, created $15 million out of thin space. The hard part of the contract already been over with. It was last season. Why law? The $75 million up front. That was the hardest part of his contract. Yep. For those who don't know, his contract was, look, Dak Prescott contract was only $122 million guaranteed. For quick math, any math majors out there, we can do the math real quickly. Real quickly. 
There's forty seven million dollars left on the guaranteed money of his contract. Econ Major Jackson State. They pay us to crunch the numbers, baby. $160 million, I think 122 of that guarantee. $75 million for the last season. That was the chunk of the money. Dude got $47 million left on his contract. The guaranteed, look at the guarantee. Don't look at the bigger number. The guaranteed money is the money. So we can, we can just put the hush. That's another two years, basically, on how they're going to crunch these numbers in half. So the money part is not, of, is not the issue. The Cowboys' willing and dealing part is right now. But it is what it is, Cowboy Nation. Boy, I'm seeing you, y'all love Deshaun Watson. There's a lot of Deshaun Watson uh, uh, news up here. <laughs> oh, my gosh, man. Um, <clears throat> I, I've seen multiple people say, man, uh, I don't want Deshaun Watson to go here, go there. I don't care. Where he go? At the end of the year, only one team left that Lombardi trophy up at the end of the year. One team. Cowboys can be that team if they refocus and focus in and getting this defense together. I just painted the picture. These boys, these boys right now, these boys right now, if we were the number one defense on third down, number one team in takeaways, what else do we need to improve on on defense? The other efficiency levels. We do. Stop the run better. Let's knock down some of these points. Let's not just be the number one team on third down. There's second down and first down. Let's slow them down even better. We got Parsons. We got Diggs. And even though a lot of people say, yeah, Diggs give up a lot of yards, bull sugar, right? How can we combat that? Bring in another safety. Hmm? That would help. Get more pressure. Where? Law? Where? Law? Well, you you tried to figure out a way to keep D-Law. Right? That's an experience. I do know that a new broom can sweep the floor good. But D-Law right now is that old broom that can get the corners. Right? So let's figure this out. Let's look into this draft for one, right? And I, I've seen also, let's let, let's look around in this free agent. Where Law, well, I think Eddie Goldman is out there. I think he, he was a good nose tackle. You find, find some way to get that. Get beefier inside. The most, if if uh, like my guy Cole said, if we want to stop comparing the Cowboys to the nineties, well, there is one guy that's the most, one of the most outside of Jim Jeffcoat, who's very underrated with the Cowboys. Right, a lot of people don't revere him as a as a good defensive lineman guy. Well, Tony Tolbert and all of those boys, I get it, right. But Russell Maryland was a very underrated guy. You don't see documentaries and flashes of news and storylines of Russell, right? You don't see that. Pushing big body can't stop me. We need one of those big boys that can be legitimate, can be a legitimate guy for this team. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. The name is Law Nation. Appreciate you guys for jumping in to this episode. Let me see how long I've been live. I'm supposed to be in here for only 30 minutes. So I know I've probably been longer than that. Somebody can tell me how long I've been live. Appreciate everybody for jumping in. The, stu- the, the storyline is um, Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins is to be traded or released. And I wish the Cowboys... 35 minutes, okay, appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for being honest with me. Thank you. All right, so 
with that being said, Cowboy Nation, uh, it, it is a, a beautiful time to talk to you guys on this beautiful day. If you have loved ones, be sure to spend time with them. No one knows the day nor the hour. Uh, let's, let's stay focused to uh, this Cowboys team. You know, we, we look, we family. You know, we are all family at the end of the day. We may not look the same, talk the same. I'm country is all get out, right? <laughs> and shout out to Natchez, Mississippi. That's my hometown. Country. And uh, I've, I've seen people that talk to me from Canada, Guam. <laughs> Even got people that watches this show all the way. They sneakily watch it from China and Japan, you know. <laughs> so it is what it is. Uh, uh, and those who are out there in base, those who are out there in war on either side, I uh, hope all is well, uh, Cowboy Nation. Yeah, appreciate you guys so much. Jim Jeffcoat was t- cold. Yeah, yeah, you know. Kelvin Charles, appreciate you. <clears throat> Sharon is Karen, Cowboy Nation. Be sure to share. Shout out to you, Lady Jessica. Uh, Gina, Robbie, Radford, appreciate you. Big, what's good with you, man? From Hernando, Mississippi, appreciate you. Canada, Cowboys in the house, appreciate you. Layman Holt, appreciate you. Uh, we will be doing a live draft show on the day of the draft at Toyota Music Factory in Dallas. So I'd love for you guys to come out to support. We will be live like 95 there, right? Jay Verse, appreciate you. Would you want a new offensive line coach? No, I would want a new offensive coordinator. If not, somebody that can come in with a strong fist and say, hey, man, these are how we can get things going. Uh, Michael says 757 here. Appreciate you. Family argue too. Yeah, we do. Oh, we do. We did. We have many of disagreements. You know, if have anybody planned for a family reunion, should the shirts be yellow or blue? You know what I'm saying? That's how it goes. No, nah, man, I want yellow, you know. And what side of the tree you on? You know, when the last time you paid your dues? Coming down and breaking down the the, the price points of all of the family members, that, that's a lot of back and forth, right? It's family, though. We love each other. We talk about each other. But when other, when other teams come, if somebody came in here by being an Eagles fan or Washington football team fan or Commodes or Giants, we'll jump on them. We could talk about each other, you know. But we definitely, we definitely will not allow the outside people to talk noise about us. And that's, that's how it goes. That's why you don't see a lot of cowgirls in here, right? We don't we don't allow that here. Do we have a mentor for the teams like we used to have with Calvin Hill? This is from Ken Art. Um, I think the guy, the last mentor that we had, he passed away, and I forgot this guy's name. Um, uh, if uh. What was his name? Oh, my gosh. His name is at the tip of my tongue. That was the last mentor I knew was for Dez Bryant. And I think he lived a little bit to mentor Randy Gregory. Dog, his name is at the the tip of my tongue. Appreciate you, Ken Art, for uh, the donation, though. Thank you so much. It goes a long way, Ken Art. I thank you. Uh, like Calvin Hill. Oh, his name is it Tony Evans. No, Tony Evans is pretty good, though. Y'all listen to his tape. Calvin Hill was the man. Oh, my God, his name at the tip of my tongue. Let me do it like this. Uh, uh, mentor. Uh... What was his mentor? It wasn't Vincent Jackson. Ah, dog, his name to me. Now, you, now you see, I'm supposed to be getting up off here. Now I'm looking for God. mentor for Dallas Cowboys. Uh, no, not Mike McCarthy. Mm, no, uh, it's not. I'm itching for this guy. Oh man, his name is right there, the tip of my tongue. Is it Gene Upshaw? No. God dog it. 
Not Tommy Rob, not not Tony Robbins, but ah, uh, all right. I'll be looking up that mentor, and I get right with you guys uh, on the next episode. But I appreciate you so much uh, for tuning in. Uh, be sure to hit that like, share this content, and for those who, like I said, join the halftime app. Your name is automatically entered in. Just click on the description box. You see the halftime app there. And uh, for those who give donations and support this thing by memberships and support community tab you also name get entered into the michael irvin jersey and i hope somebody can wear it and this one right here it's extra large so if it's too big you just wear it to go to sleep in <laughs> all right cowboy nation one love appreciate you guys so much y'all have a blessed and beautiful day uh the time is real and of the essence appreciate you guys Let's continue to put one foot in front of the other. Uh, I hope that the Cowboys don't trade Lyle Collins, by the way, and they get the understanding that if you trade him before this point, it's only a $1.33 million cap saving. That's not nothing. I think, I think the next season, 2023, you save $10 million off the cap. You can't find a guard or a tackle that will play at the level of Lyle Collins in the third round, nor the second round, I believe. Maybe, just maybe in the top 10 picks, one of these guards or tackles will live up to the hype. Maybe, that's a big maybe too. That's the reality of it. So the Cowboys need to, and that's N-E-E-D, Learn how to will and deal better. But write this down, Cowboy Nation. You know, a prize fighter continue to swing even when he's down, right? Unless he's Nate Robinson <laughs> or any of the people that Jake Paul fought. But when you're up against your struggles, meet it squarely face to face. Lift your chin, set your shoulders, plant your feet and take a brace. When it's vain to try to dodge it, do the best that you can do. You may fall, you may conquer. See this thing all the way through. Listen up. Black may be the black clouds about you and your future may seem grim, but don't let your nerve desert you. Keep yourself in fight and trim. The worst is bound to happen in spite of all that you do. Remember, running from it will not save you. Even hope may seem but futile, then where trouble may be beset. Remember, you facing what other legends have met. Who are they? Roger Starback, Troy Aiken, the playmaker, right? Michael Irvin. You got to stay focused. Realign your mind, baby. Head high, eyes through the finish, Cowboy Nation, and see it through. I'm only saying this because we were able to keep fighting year in and year out, even sleeping out of my car. I knew the sun will rise again, and I just have to see it through. Don't fold up like a wallet or a lawn chair. Continue to fight, Cowboy Nation. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Let's go, Cowboy Nation. Let's run it up. Let's run it up, baby. Yeah. Come on. Can we check or something? I'm really in the field, let up. Yeah. When I, uh. I've been really in the field, let up. Wish I let up feel lately. I just wanna run it up. Run it, baby. Don't need no deals, I make the deal. Have to take it to a meal lately. I just wanna run it up. Thank y'all. For this episode, really appreciate you. Kinda check us on. One love to all. I just wanna run it up. Let's go. That's who kind of yeah. kind of kind of kind of. Lately, I just wanna run it up. Put down where you from, Cowboy Nation. We need to know where y'all are from. Let's go. Greens and pinks is all the same. I still say and roll my chains. Take some losses when I play. Charge it to the game. I'm with us. Shout out to your no bow. Stephen White, Jay, yes. Jay, Shout out to Still you, Perez from Cali. Used to say I was 
size off for the bag and that's worth more to me I mix Nike with designer, I experiment Look at Jay Noble check, come on shelf and I'm not feeling it. Ten a so key, shout out to you Come on, Lafayette, Louisiana in the house Let's go Sergio from Dow Hard, Texas I just wanna run it up, baby Thank you for this episode Shout out to you Straight out of Marshall, Texas Jessica Come on Hey, ho, yeah, let's go Come on I never own no chrome Too many foes and clothes Yeah, yeah As the world spin I be in zones alone I be on road alone Come on Let's slow it down Come on El Paso in the house, appreciate you. One of the greatest running backs of all time. Emmett Smith. Still water. Appreciate you, Oklahoma. London Moore. Shout out to Jersey in the house. Iceberg Q. We up out of here. One love, baby. tell you about the truth the hardest pill to swallow will always be the truth shout out to you Cole from Jacktown Jacktown Jews <laughs> shout out to Freelon Bottom line, station in Fort Hood. Shout out to all of the people that listen in the bases, man. Killeen, Texas, everybody, man. Let's go. East Texas live. Appreciate you. Yep. Let's go. Appreciate you, Khan. Thank you so much, man, for your love and support on the Facebook group. Don't let the street lights hit you all alone. It's dangerous. Sadiqwa, appreciate you for your prayers. Don't let the street lights hit you. Can I be on here too? Right, Cowboy Nation. If you have anything on your mind, your heart, soul, please be sure. Feel free to text me 682-214-4087. That's the text line for your mind. Peace. We up out of here. Fly on, fly on, fly on, fly on, fly on.